Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Hello, everyone, and welcome to lecture number three from the course, Killing the Dream Killers. My name is Carlton, and I am your instructor for this lecture. Now, in this lecture, we discuss why you must kill your dream killers. And afterwards, what I'll do is give you an activity for you to complete. Um, remember from lecture number one that dream killers are the people, places, things, voices, and whatever forces there are working against you to fulfill your dreams. And the reason why we put together this course is to help you stop them from keeping you from successfully achieving your goals and your dreams. All right, now let me share with you a story about what happened in one of our workshops. While we were discussing, you know, retirement, Maddie raised her hand and had this to say. She said, I am 60, I'm still renting, I'm divorced, my kids have their own lives, I take care of my grandkids on occasion, I barely have any savings because I live paycheck to paycheck and I don't see any way that I could ever retire until I'm dead. I just hope to stay healthy, to keep on working. How am I supposed to get out of this rat race? All I'm trying to do is to be happy, but I'm really not. What do I do? Well, Maddie's question sparked a fruitful discussion about how it is when you're running the rat race, your dream killers always show up. That's why you must kill your dream killers, because if you don't, they will always be there to kill your dreams. All right, so while you're in the rat race, all you're trying to do is live a happy life. I mean, it's easy, it's simple, you just wanna be happy. So, you go after things like the education, and the job, and the career, and the friends, and the relationships, and then marriage, and then family, and then house, and then cars, and fortune, and then fame, and then after that, retirement. But at every turn, your dream killers are telling you you're not happy. But wait, wait a minute, wait. Why aren't you happy? You don't really know. All you know is that you are not happy. So you get back in the rat race and you start chasing more things. And then all the while, your dream killers are telling you you're still not happy. Now, there may be times of fun, and but at the end of the day, you are convinced that you're not eternally happy. You just don't have a sense of peace. Now, one thing you may do is that you may try getting out of the rat race. You may sell all the stuff that you have and live like a hermit in some faraway country that people have done, um, and they've gotten off the grid, so to speak. But the problem is, even if you get out of the rat race, you're still a rat. Well, at least according to your dream killers, you are. All right, so what we did for the workshop participants is that we helped them to identify signs when they are in the rat race and they are not happy at the same time. Now, if you Google signs that you are in the rat race, you'll get a number of them. You'll get a, a number of lists of what people say that psychiatrists and psychologists talk about um, what it means about being in the rat race. But what we did is that we chose the 12 signs that we experienced over the years of doing the workshops. Now, here are the signs in no particular order that you are both in the rat race and you're not happy at the same time. All right, number one, you are not satisfied. You know, you can't find any contentment with what you have or what you do. Um, number two, um, you don't know exactly what you would do with the million dollars. I mean, some of us say we do, but you know, if you don't know exactly, then it speaks to not having a real solid long-term plan. Um, another sign is that you live an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, means that you're letting yourself go or you may be thinking about exercises, but it's only a thought. And another sign is that everyone else is a problem, which means that you are a master at finger pointing. Um, then there's no real way to get help for yourself and you're gonna get out, stay in a rat race if you're a finger pointer. Um, another sign is that you get angry quite often for no good reason. The littlest things set you off and then people have to walk on eggshells around you. And what this speaks of, it speaks a lot of unresolved issue. Uh, another sign is that you don't know your purpose in life so you feel that life is a bit meaningless. You know, why are you here? Uh, no, not why do you think that you're here. Why are you on this earth? You know, what purpose do you have? Do you know? Well, if you don't, then that may be a sign that you're in the rat race and you're unhappy. Another sign is that you have fake zeal, like two plus two is five. I mean, like, really? Two plus two is five. <laughs> you know, are you really that out of touch with reality that two plus two is five? 
that's fake zeal. Um, another sign is that you allow addictions to dictate your day. You know what I mean? That you can't wait to get off of work so you can go get a drink or get some comfort food or watch TV all night long. Um, that's another sign that you're in the rat race and you're not happy. Uh, another sign is that you feel depressed and suicidal. I mean, we all get depressed, but if you allow it to get to the level of suicide, then it, you are more of a victim of the dream killers in the rat race, unfortunately. Um, another sign is that you are in a lot of debt and live paycheck to paycheck. Now, you know, debt by itself can serve some real good, but if you couple that with living paycheck to paycheck, then that's really not good at all. And that's a sign that you are in the rat race and you're not, ha uh, not happy. All right, another sign is that, you know, you're selfish and you don't care. You know, when you think only of yourself or you say, I don't give a, you know, fill in the blank. Now that is the height of self-deception in the rat race. And then uh, number 12 is that you can't sit still for five minutes. If you can't relax and let a day go by, and then that just means you have rat race issues and your dream killers have convinced you that you are not happy. Now, if you can identify with any of these signs, it means that your dream killers are doing their job of keeping you unhappy in the rat race. Now, if this list is about somebody that you cared about, now, wouldn't you say like, man, you know, like that's crazy, but that's the dream killer's job to keep you unhappy in the rat race. And that's why you must kill your dream killers. Now, when you kill your dream killers, you change your focus from the things in the rat race and begin looking at those things that you really need. It's like cleaning out your room. On the left side here, you can see a room that is disorganized, that it's messy, that it's junky, that it's cluttered. And so it's hard to navigate in a room like this. But on the right hand side, you have a room that's organized, it's neat, doesn't have much distractions in a room. And you know what? That is just like our life because the studies show that when you boil down to it, that we all have four basic human needs. That's the need of love, the need of forgiveness, the need of security, and the need of hope. And the reason why we all need love is because we want to feel connected and we want to be wanted. The need of forgiveness is because we all make mistakes. The need of security is because we all want to be able to feel like we can relax. And the need of hope is because we all want to look forward to a tomorrow. So I told Maddie and the rest of the participants that they should not necessarily change the things they chased after in the rat race. Instead, they needed to change the game. And the new game looks like this. Number one, got to kill that dream killers. And then number two, you need to set goals based upon their four basic human needs and go after them. You don't necessarily do it in that order. Um, your dream killers are kind of doing you a favor by telling you that you're still not happy in the rat race um, because then maybe you'd want to get out of it. But you still must kill them because then you can change from being in the rat race and chasing after things that you really don't want to being in this new game to make sure that you take care of those basic needs. And those basic needs are very important to take care of. Okay? All right. So now what I have is I have a two part activity for you that I'd like for you to go through after you finish this lecture and it's located in the resources area. Now there are two parts of this activity and each of them should take you about five or 10 minutes, but these are very important as you will see in the activity feedback section on the last page. So please don't look at the feedback until you complete each section. Please do that. Did I say please? Okay, please. Now in part one, you will respond to the question, what would you do with the million dollars? All right, you'll have some options that you can select and then a place to give additional information. And then in part two, you'll be asked to define love, forgiveness, security, and hope. After you complete parts one and two, then take a look at the activity feedback on the form. It's on the last page. And again, please don't look at it until you finish the sections, okay? Great. Well, that's it for this lecture. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next lecture. Have a great day.